Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are logging in from. I hope you, guys, you can hear me. My name is Samarindu Mohanty. I'm the SA Regional Director of SIP. And first of all, let me thank you all for joining in with this very important topic here. And on behalf of the International Potato Center, uh, Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resource Research Development, PCARD, and CGIR Research Program on Climate Change, Agriculture and Food Security, CCAPS. I would like to welcome you all to this first series, first webinar in the series of webinars we plan to organize on the very important and very timely topic on the role of women in developing a climate smart uh, food uh, seed system in the Philippines there. Before, before I start and hand over my mic to my colleague, Sampriti Borwa, who will be moderating along with me for the whole session here. Let me, let me give you a couple of facts here to see that, show it to that. On gender equity, if we have a gender equity globally, equality and gender empowerment, it can add up to 12 to $28 trillion to global annual GDP. This is a study done by McKinsey and company in, in 2015. But if you come to women empowerment in agriculture, women empowerment and equality can improve agricultural productivity and household food security. It's, so it's a pure smart economics to go for gender equality and the, the women empowerment globally there. If you come to Philippines and look at the women involvement, female in, in, in involvement in agriculture, it's declining. Right now, it's around 13% among all the women employed or, or in, the, on, on the job, in the employment there. Only 13% are employed in agriculture right now on a declining trend. But if you look at the share of women in agricultural labor force, I don't have a specific to Philippines, but if you look at the top blue lines there, so it's likely below in the mid 40s range. So the women still contribute, and you know, more than 40, between 40 to 50% of the total labor force uh, in agriculture in Southeast Asia, and also very similar in the Philippines there. Just to, just to dive in and talk about women equality and empowerment in the Philippines, it is very different from many other parts of the world, including South Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, and many other countries there. In this country, women have equal access to productive resources, such as land and input, which is not the case in many parts of South Asia and uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Women have greater control over household income than the men there, which is very unusual than many other parts of the world. Women play an active role in agricultural groups in the Philippines. All farming decisions are jointly made by, by husbands and wives. Land is formally owned by men, but women have joint decision-making power over land utilization. The finally, the women participate more actively than men in most agricultural meetings organized by local extension group there. The point is there, the women already very active, very equal, the equality, gender equality, gender empowerment already there. So anything happens in agriculture, women will have to play very big role, very significant role including the seed system, including the, uh, any, other, uh, any other sector of the agriculture there. So before I hand in my mic uh, so for the introduction of the speaker here, let me just go through the couple of ground housekeeping rules here. So here is the few housekeeping, housekeeping rule here. If you, you know the chat box on the bottom of your screen, you can use the chat box to raise any comments you have, any, any questions you have. After this, we'll have the keynote speaker. If you will have any question for Dr. Dar, uh, Secretary Dar, then please uh, use the chat box to raise the questions. We'll be happy to ask him a couple of questions after his keynote address. Second one is, uh, please inform that we are recording your, this webinar is being recorded from the beginning to end. And if you, if you are disconnected, please go and click on the link sent to you there. Uh, so what I'll do is that we'll start the program. I'll hand over the hand over the uh, the floor to uh, Sampriti Borwa, who will introduce our keynote speaker there. 
Sam Priti, over to you. Thank you, Sam. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone from all parts of the world who have joined us today. We all know that seed is one of the most important input for all farmers. In working towards crafting a climate smart seed system in the Philippines, we thought focusing on the subject and addressing the issue with a gender lens will be, help us better understand the role of women in developing a climate smart seed system and the changing gender roles with increasing commercialization and specialization of seed production. Our keynote speaker, Dr. William D. Dar, does not need any introduction. Currently, he is the Secretary of Agriculture in the Philippines. He is a well-known agricultural scientist and an administrator. He was the Director General of ICRISAT, a CGIAR center for 15 years, which makes him the longest serving Director General in any CGIAR center. Without any further delay, let me request Dr. Dar to deliver his keynote address. Sir, please, over to you. But what we can do in the meantime, Dr. Dar, uh, fix his mic. What will go to the next speaker? Go ahead, Dr. Mula. Good afternoon to all. Good evening and maybe good morning. So wherever you are. So on behalf of our esteemed secretary, who has suddenly uh, have an urgent uh, matter to attend to. So I'll do the presentation on on his keynote address and with me is Asek, Asek Noel Reyes. Uh, I hope you can see him. So he will be helping me out with some of the question and answer portion. So the presentation of our secretary focuses on credit, particularly for women. Next, please. So as you can see the, from, the, the, from the slide, we have uh, the Agricultural Credit Policy Council, or ACPC, that continues to strengthen and hasten the delivery of its credit services to the most vulnerable sectors, especially during this time of the COVID-19. So in here, you can see the greater inclusion of women. ACPC mainstreams gender and development in its various credit programs, which means fair access to easy and affordable credit for men and women. I think, you know, for a fact that Philippines, the women are quite, you know, um, uh, have a very strong role not only in, 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 in government service, but almost in all uh, sectors of the society. So Lending for Agribusiness for Women, ILAW, ILAW means light in, in, in our, in, in English, ILAW is a, a Tagalog word for light. So I think this is very timely and the, the, the acronym uh, uh, is very much fitted and this is basically on Sure <laughs> Women Loans Program. To address the loss of income and livelihood of vulnerable sectors as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we amplify gender equality in agribusiness and promote the empowerment of women in agriculture and fisheries. Uh, uh, Ma'am Jojo Bajola of uh, ACPC is here. So for better presentation, because this is her field of specialization, I'm going to request her and I hope the, the, the audience wouldn't mind. She will proceed with the presentation of the keynote uh, address of our secretary, Dr. William Dar. So Ma'am Jojo, kayo na po ha? Ah, sige po. All right. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a, an honor for me to be representing Secretary Dar in this activity. I am the Executive Director of the Agricultural Credit Policy Council. And we all know for a fact that one of our most vulnerable sectors in the country are women. At the same time, we recognize that women are, are one of those who are likely to resuscitate our economy. So. As can be seen from our credit programs, majority, almost 50%, close to 50% of our borrowers are women. And what is most interesting is the fact that they have been registering uh, very good repayment rates. 
probably because of, you know, women are naturally uh, good financial managers, uh, very nurturing, very focused. And so because of this, we have created a new program that is really focused on women, which we call uh, Innovative Lending for Agribusiness for Women or ILAW. The secretary has uh, recognizes the important role of women in um, uh, bringing progress in the countryside or improving the, the economy in the rural sector through agriculture and fisheries. So through, through uh, our program, which is ILAW, ILAW meaning light, uh, because we know that we recognize women as the light of our homes or ilaw ng tahanan, the major objective of ilaw is to address the loss of income and livelihood of women of vulnerable sectors as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, amplify gender equality in agribusiness, and promote the empowerment of women in agriculture and fisheries. Next. I already mentioned that. Next. Next, please. Next, please. Okay. So now, uh, as I said earlier, majority, even under the SURE COVID-19 program, which is our program for our farmers and fishers affected by the pandemic, um, almost 50% of our borrowers are women. So that is why we decided to create a program that would really focus on gender and development, on the empowerment, to promote the empowerment of women in agriculture and fisheries. Next. Okay, so who are qualified to borrow from our program? Any female member of the household of small farmers and fishers, women in indigenous who are who belong to indigenous groups or female member of the households of jeepney drivers who are currently adver adversely affected by the pandemic and the public utility vehicle modernization program next so women can borrow up to 100,000 pesos no collateral no interest payable up to five years. Next. So they can use their loans for uh, financing their capital requirements of startup or existing agri-fishery based income generating activities such as agri-fishery production, processing or marketing, other activities in the supply chain or a combination of agri-fishery on-farm and off-farm enterprise. Next. So since uh, ACPC, the DA ACPC, cannot lend directly to our beneficiaries primarily because we do not have the network nor the expertise to do so, um, we are tapping partner lending conduits in the different regions. We have a close to more than 200 partner lending conduits in the entire country, and we will be we have already um, partnered with PayMaya Philippines for cash cashless loans via PayMaya enabled prepaid payment cards. Next. So if you have further information about it, uh, you can see from the screen our phone numbers, our email address, as well as our office address. So that's all. <laughs> Thank you. So. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mom Jojo. Yes. And if you have yes, any queries, she would be around. And of course, uh, as I said, Asek Noel Reyes is here with me. Uh, maybe we can entertain a few questions now. Is there any questions from the from the participants? You can put in the chat box, please. We can ask. Uh, Dr. Mula. Yeah. So maybe. Uh, yeah, you can put up your questions in the chat box via the chat box. 
So far, there is no question. Maybe we can come back uh, when there will be a question. Yeah, sure. We can go to the sure. next speaker. Yeah. So again, thank you so much and sincerest apology. Uh, hopefully, uh, the secretary can just, you know, pop in in a little while or, you there was, know. There was, a, there was one question here. Uh, the, what are the needed requirements for this? Can we see the contact details again? Uh, contact details. A lot of questions now. Uh, can a group of women yeah, avail yeah. the said project? It's a last slide. Last slide. Last slide. The last slide. Yes, this is the contact information. Yeah. Mom Jojo, can you yes, please just uh, repeat again some of the, the, the basic requirements? Uh, the basic requirements are um, uh, one government ID issued, one government issued ID, uh, pick, uh, one by one picture, and the person, the, he has to be listed in the RSBSA, but if, if she is not listed in the RSBSA, we can help her enroll. We will help her enroll in the RSBSA. RSBSA is the registry system for the basic sectors in agriculture. Uh, there are one, there are two more and questions. And a business plan, sorry. And a business plan, simple business plan. Uh, the other question is, uh, can a group of women avail the benefits? Or how can a university avail the assistance provided by DIR? Sorry. Mom Jojo, did you hear the question? Can, can, can a group of women avail of the uh, can, opportunity? Can a group of women? women? Yes, ma'am. Yes, they can. Yes. Uh, well, since it's a basically a new program, we are still crafting the implementation guidelines. But they can. Yes, ma'am. They can. Can an employed wife of a fish farmer's Avail the credit program to start your yes, own enterprise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They can. Uh, do you they do you is... provide assistance to women in developing their business plan? Yes, we we have a group in ACPC tasked to to help in the development of the business plan. Uh, so, what is the most common entrepreneurship women are involved? Um, I have listed earlier the projects that are eligible. As I said, all activities along the supply chain from production to processing to marketing. Does ILO cover loans for enterprise related to food products? Yes, yes, sir. All related okay. to food products. How much can we give them? Are there any limits in the amount? Up to 100,000 pesos, sir. $2,000. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll collect both questions and get back to you uh, after the after the panelist presentation. So we'll go to the next presentation. Sampriti. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mula. Thank you, Ma'am Joe and the team of Secretary Dar for sharing us uh, his presentation. And uh, this presentation... Uh, really brought out a very important point about inclusion of women in affordable credit. And it was very helpful to know about the ELO program in Philippines. I'm sure there are many questions uh, from everybody. We can see lots of questions in the tech chat box. And uh, we will really get back to you in, in, in replying to your questions later on. So our, I, I would want to know, is uh, Dr. Brown's connection problem solved? So uh, our next presenter, as I had mentioned earlier, is Dr. Ernesto Brown. Dr. Ernesto Brown is the director of Socioeconomics Research Division, SCRD of the Philippines, Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources Research and Development, PICAD. His expertise includes agricultural policy, agricultural marketing, and R&D management, among others. The division SCRD is also the focal unit of PICAD on gender and development in agriculture, aquatic and natural resources, AANR. I would now request Dr. Brown to share his insights on the background of seed system in the Philippines and recommendation for women in creating a climate resilient seed system. Yeah, Dr. Brown. Well, um, uh, good afternoon, uh, good morning or good evening, <laughs> wherever you are. Uh, it's really a pleasure to um, to um, participate in this uh, webinar 
on um, the role of women in developing a climate smart seed system in the Philippines. Uh, this is how the uh, presentation will uh, proceed. Just a, just a while. In slide uh, transition, okay. So first, um, this is how the uh, presentation will proceed. Uh, first, I'll try to give some uh, reasons why we have to examine the role of women in developing climate smart. It's, and then I'll provide brief background of seed system in the Philippines in terms of the uh, components and different types of uh, the seed system. I'll talk about challenges to Philippine seed system amidst uh, climate change, and then uh, discuss about the role of women in the seed uh, value chain, uh, after which, um, because uh, our concern would be, um, uh, we would like to know whether, or, or the state of um, empowerment of women in, in, in the seed system, uh, we'll try to, um, uh, glean from the uh, results of uh, this one, the study on gender roles in agriculture. Uh, of course, I, would not, I, I don't want to miss this opportunity uh, to share with you some of the initiatives of uh, DOSTP card towards gender equitable agricultural development. Uh, and then I will uh, conclude my presentation with um, some uh, R&D and uh, policy initiatives uh, that uh, can be uh, pursued in order to enhance the role of women in developing climate smart uh, seed system. Okay, first, uh, why examine the role of women in developing climate the smart uh, seed system? Or why should we even be concerned about the role of women in developing climate smart seed system? Uh, seed system is, uh, of course, one of the pillars of agricultural development and food uh, security. Uh, you can't have a good agriculture without having a good seed system. Uh, but just like any other systems in agriculture, the system is vulnerable to the adverse impact of climate change. And uh, one strategy which, really, which is really gaining much uh, traction in underdeveloped and developing agricultural economies is this one, enhancing the role of women in developing climate uh, smart uh, seed system. Um, there, the re literature is uh, replete with the evidences that um, more uh, gender uh, equitable agriculture leads to better uh, productivity and uh, uh, sustain, uh, more sustainable uh, development. And where there's gender inequality, there is food uh, insecurity. Okay, so the seed system, of course, consists of uh, the informal seed sector. Where you have the farmer managed seed uh, production based on indigenous knowledge and local uh, diffusion mechanisms. The formal seed sector, um, uh, of course, is where you have the private companies responding to the commercial incentives on hybrids, especially of high value seeds. And then you have the integrated system, which uh, has the elements of both the formal and informal uh, seed sector, all right? The challenges in seed system amidst uh, climate change uh, with uh, the higher frequency of um, of um, extreme events, extreme weather events, uh, the uh, say the, the extended uh, dry period, uh, you know, drought and uh, flooding and all of those things. These really are impacting on uh, adversely on the uh, seed system in terms of uh, re reduced uh, seed yield and uh, quality, uh, potential loss of uh, seed uh, diversity. Uh, increase uh, post harvest losses of seeds. Um, and of course, uh, unpredictable weather conditions affect planting system and calendar. Now, uh, here is a presentation of the seed value chain where you have the different um, functions uh, in the value chain from the input, uh, uh, input system uh, 
uh, down to uh, marketing and the different agents uh, and activities being carried out. So uh, you have from the seed grower, from uh, seed selection to uh, seed preparation, and then you have uh, seed uh, uh, producer, um, which can be uh, uh, groups or individual farmers. And then um, you have um, uh, those uh, seed buyers and seed distributors who are engaged in these activities of drying, crashing, pre-cleaning, cleaning, size grade, size grading, uh, treating, uh, quality testing, packaging, and labeling. And of course you have marketing where you have uh, seed distribution. Um, now for the role of women in the seed value chain, um, study showed that women are uh, basically more involved in um, management of uh, varietal uh, diversity, uh, pre-germination tests, harvesting, crushing, storage, and drying. Uh, also on uh, seed selection or self-saving uh, and for household uh, consumption. Um, they are, of course, also doing this, uh, sowing, seed cleaning, drying, crushing, uh, somehow they are participating in these activities and of course seed uh, marketing. So the question is, um, what is the current state of um, uh, empowerment of um, women in the seed system? Um, there are no uh, specific studies on that, but we can actually glean um, from a more general study, which is a study on the um, level of empowerment in, um, in agriculture uh, in general. And this one, a study which was uh, conducted by uh, Actor uh, et al. Uh, they examined the gender roles in agriculture in Southeast Asia, covering four countries, uh, Philippines, Thailand, uh, Indonesia, and uh, Cambodia. And they used this um, uh, they actually um, use a qualitative approach, but they use the domains of the Women um, Empowerment in Agriculture Index. This uh, Women Empowerment in Agriculture Index, of course, is a quantitative approach. It has its domain. They use those domains to do a qualitative uh, assessment. And these are the domains that you can see here. Uh, division of labor, access to resources, access to and control over income organization, membership and leadership, and uh, access to extension service. And so I, I just would like to share with you some of the highlights of this uh, study. In terms of gender roles, um, and this is in Southeast Asia, as I've said, they covered four Southeast Asian countries. Men are involved in seedbed and land preparation, fertilizer and pesticide application. Women are involved in well, in preparation of plants and snacks. That's the only thing that actually women uh, solely um, are the one uh, doing. Uh, both men and women do transplanting, weeding, manual harvesting, and post-harvest activities, um, clearing and ma uh, maintaining the uh, paddy bond or the dikes. The highest, uh, and this is, I think, uh, an interesting finding, the highest women's involvement in decision-making uh, in rice farming is observed in Thailand and uh, in the Philippines, okay? Now, in terms of access to resources, all family resources were owned by both husband and wife. Decisions about the purchase and sale of land or, or house or, or major family assets are made together by husband and wife. Uh, decisions about credit are also made uh, 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 in mutual agreement and day-to-day -day household management decisions are commonly taken by, by the wife alone. In terms of access to and control over income, wife in most cases manages the pool income of the husband and wife. Decisions about large expenses are made together. For organization membership and leadership in the Philippines and Thailand, Women are active members of female only as well as mixed agricultural and non-agricultural organizations. In the Philippines, women play strong leadership roles in these organizations. I think 
that's a that's an important thing, and uh, we have to to uh, do that. Um, uh, in Thailand and in the Philippines, women have direct contact with the extension officers. Uh, in the Philippines, women participate more actively than men in most agricultural meetings organized by the local extension office. Men in Thailand and in the Philippines prefer to work in the field and are not very interested in attending trainings or meetings. However, they listen to the information conveyed by their wives. So what's the implication of all this or what's the meaning of all this? Well, this means that women in Philippine agriculture in Southeast Asia, or at least in the Philippines, are already empowered and like those, well, relatively, I would say, uh, compared to those in Africa or South Asia. Because if you look at the literature, most of uh, gender studies uh, are really uh, uh, were conducted um, to cover countries in Africa or South Asia. And it's really, uh, uh, you know, if you look at um, Southeast, Southeast Asia, it appears that there is a different narrative as far as gender is concerned. And that is women in these countries, particularly Philippines and Thailand, are relatively more empowered. So the implication of this in terms of enhancing the role of women in the development of climate smart seed system should no longer be about empowerment, which is um, uh, the typical uh, strategy uh, being uh, conducted or being adopted in countries in uh, Africa or in South Asia, but uh, on capitalizing on their present role or building on their present strength. I think that's uh, uh, an important message that we can get from the results of, of uh, this uh, study. Uh, the roles and challenges of women in agriculture in the midst of climate change. Uh, of course, the increase of extreme weather conditions, floods and cyclones will put the burden of dealing with devastation and destruction on the women. They often lose the capacity to uh, su uh, support uh, their families in terms of you know, their livelihoods. Uh, during periods of drought, the problem of looking for and collecting animal fodder, for instance, were mainly borne by uh, women. Uh, the impact of drought uh, tends to vary according to class, age, and ethnicity, and, and the gender uh, uh, would be in terms of women, that they are more uh, vulnerable to this. Um, the impact of uh, on women and young children more than others, this is due to their social, cultural, and uh, of course, economic family and Okay, so as I said, I don't want to miss this opportunity to share with you some of the uh, initiatives of the guide towards uh, uh, gender. Dr. Brown, we have yes. already reached our time slot. Okay, so may maybe just uh, uh, two more minutes. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, these are the initiatives of Picard. Picard has long uh, recognized uh, uh, the importance of integrating gender in uh, research and development activities. And so now we have a program here in Picard, which is enhancement of gender and development integration towards a more inclusive R&D in agriculture, aquatic and natural resources. So the project is a comprehensive assessment of the extent by which gender is integrated in Picard, R&D, not only Picard, but also uh, DOST, Department of Science and Technology uh, supported projects. Uh, we have also some uh, other initiatives which have been completed already, like enhancing the sustainability of the informal soybean seed sector, uh, which focus on um, advancing farmer seed uh, saving techniques, uh, and other uh, projects like uh, disaster, but this one is more related to uh, climate change, uh, disaster risk reduction of climate change impact on agricultural farms in Cordillera, and uh, this one, enhancing gender sensitive organic vegetable production livelihood enterprise for low income communities of Los Banos. So this uh, project actually, uh, this has been completed already. It provided the selected communities in the Los Banos Laguna with a livelihood enterprise on organic vegetable production. And this includes actually the uh, seed system. 
uh, improvement of peanut seed production management system uh, and uh, the other two, the safe, safe is uh, science and technology action of uh, 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 frontline uh, for uh, emergency. Uh, but this is more related to uh, climate hazards, okay? So I would like to conclude by uh, sharing with you some, well, uh, also, uh, in addition to those initiatives which I have uh, mentioned, uh, Picard is also uh, playing very active role in policy analysis and advocacy. With regards to this current interest on, on seed, uh, we are actually um, uh, providing some inputs on the amendments to seed uh, industry development act bills uh, pending in Congress now, and this, all of these are amendments to the uh, seed app uh, here in the Philippines. So these are the, um, these are the uh, initiatives or recommendations that we would like to share with you first on research and development, uh, extensive research with gender dimension. In other words, uh, continue the program on integrating uh, uh, gender in uh, research and development addressing barriers in technology adoption, gender sensitive business models, uh, I mean to say development of gender sensitive business models, uh, support greater women participation in all aspects of the seed value chain and provision of basket of varietal options. Uh, for policy and institutional initiative, uh, promoting gender sensitive approach in R&D and extension services, revisiting and or improving agrarian related laws Edit policies and putting more gender lens to the seed law. That's all. Thank you very much. Uh, and I look forward to your uh, questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brown, for sharing with us a very coherent and detailed background of the seed system and value chain in the Philippines. Also for highlighting that enhancing the role of women in developing a climate smart seed system in the context of Philippines is more about capitalizing on their present role. Thank you. This was a very nice presentation. Our next speaker sure. is Dr. Rosanna Mula. Uh, she has already been helping us in this webinar from the first presentation yes. itself. Thank you, Dr. Mula. And I would now formally welcome Dr. Mula to this webinar. Dr. Mula is currently the Assistant Director of DA Agriculture Training Institute in the Philippines. Dr. Mula did her postdoc fellowship at the International Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics, ICRISAT, in 2005 and moved on to become a special project scientist. At the same time, the coordinator of the Learning Systems Unit of the Knowledge Sharing and Innovation of ICRISAT. Her role as a coordinator has been deemed important in the field of research for development. I would hereby request Dr. Rosanna Mula to share with us the government perspective of women and speed seed system. Dr. Mula, please. Thank you. And again, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to each and everyone. So I'm going to present uh, a little bit of what we're doing now in at the Department of Agriculture, particularly the Agricultural Training Institute. And I will try to intersperse some of my experiences while at Ikrisa. So to start with, at the Department of Agriculture, particularly the Agricultural Training Institute, we adhere to inclusiveness as contained in the Department of Budget and Management Circular, where we need to formulate a gender and development plan designed to address gender issues within their concern sectors or mandate and implement applicable provisions under the RA 9710 or the Magna Carta of Women. So at ATI, we fully support gender inclusiveness through the issuance of Memorandum 1911-45, which is guideline for the crafting of ATI operating units of the budget and execution documents. In practice, a certain number of women, particularly capacity building activities, we usually allot 40 to 50% where the participants or recipients of ATI interventions in their beds are women. So it's a very explicit policy. 
this budget appropriation and inclusion in plans and targets results to more empowered women, particularly. Sir, tapos na. Yes, sir. Um, Excuse me, guys. Uh, Secretary is here. So, I will just uh, cut short my presentation. Secretary is here. So, so, I'll give the floor first to Secretary. Yes, yes, that will be good. He's here. So, so. Good afternoon. So, this is, uh, yeah, I understand this is an international webinar. Uh, organized by CIP. Congratulations to CIP. Uh, uh, yes, uh, we are here uh, working uh, and fighting the war at COVID-19. And we would like to continue uh, food production as part of our uh, resiliency plan to uh, fight this COVID-19. So uh, uh, I am available for uh, if there are any uh, questions you would like to ask. Otherwise, I will just be here to listen. Uh, I think there's a question here that uh, the credit program this Jojo explained, is it available to the Provincial Agricultural Technology Coordinating Office or PATCOS? The credit program uh, this Jojo explained the available for women. Is this available to the Provincial Agricultural Technology Coordinating Office? The credit program is available to uh, farmers and fishers, including women farmers, and uh, also to those who are in the micro and small uh, agribusinesses nationwide. That's covered. OK. The other question is, most of those registered in the RSBSA are males who are the assumed owner and tenants. How can women access those credit when they are, they are not the landowner? Well, uh, if they are women farmers, they should be uh, registered in that RSBSA. So uh, we are in the process of uh, cleansing that listing. And so there is now time to uh, lease up. Uh, I mean, uh, for them to go and uh, work with the municipal agricultural officers so they can uh, be listed in the farmer's registry. And the next question, Secretary, is if the client does not have a pay Maya account, are there any other alternative means of receiving the loan? There are many others. Uh, well, ACPC is looking at every opportunity to tap other uh, partner lending institutions. Uh, the other question is though, from some university. Though, though our university is in Auburn area. Uh, Sam, Sam, you speak like Filipino, good. Yes, I am a Filipino, sir. It's been 30 yeah, years, yeah. so I'm completely Filipino. And uh, though our university is in Alban area, we have this project, Alban Agriculture. Can we avail of your credit program spearheaded by our R&D and, uh, and GAD office? Yeah, urban agriculture is good for everyone, and we encourage universities to partner with us. Uh, they should now show the relevance this time around. So, Secretary, the, 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 you have spoke to you some more time. We can come back to you a little later, or you are, you'll be busy now. Okay, I, I have to go to another uh, engagement, so uh, Dr. Mola here will continue with you. Okay. Okay, so thanks a lot. Uh, Thank Sam you, sir. And Thank you very much. Many thanks to all. Okay, so we'll go to the next presentation, something please. So, yeah, no. let me continue. He did not finish. Yes, yes. Dr. 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 Mula, Mula, yes. Go ahead. Dr. Mula has to finish. Go ahead. But that is very nice. Dr. Dr. Dar could come and take some questions. Yeah. So, 
uh, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, just, just to recap where I left, uh, it's a deliberate uh, policy at the Department of Agriculture, particularly for the Agricultural Training Institute, where we really put like 40 to 50%, we really have to cater to women in terms of our capacity building activities. And the next presentation, which I'm going to give you, to you now, which is here as shown, is our recent initiative on the National Seed Technology Park or NSTP. This is a concerted effort of the various DA institutions with the participation of the private sector. Um, uh, Mary Ann Sayok is around, so perhaps she can make mention in a little while about this, but uh, just to give you a very, very short um, presentation of this is that uh, the National Seed Technology Park is a very recent initiative under our esteemed secretary, Dr. William Didar, and where the significant role of women from the private and public sector is very apparent. Um, below, as you can see here, shows the key women's staff and their respective roles and contributions in the development of the National Seed Technology Park. So there is an approximate um, funding here of about 200 million to start with. So what is the NSTP uh, program or project? It aims to advance the, the seed industry, uh, making use of uh, high-tech, modern processing, and or the entire value chain of seed development. And you can see here below that, for instance, we have, while it is being supported by both men and women of the department, as well as from the private sector, we have here very um, strong women, like Yusek Caballero, who chairs the discussion. And of course, attorney Lisa Mones, who handles the legal matters. Yours truly, who provides technical assistance and leading the uh, survey initiative on the importance of NSTP, trying to get the perspective of all the stakeholders to be involved in the uh, activity. And of course, we have here with us uh, Dr. Mary Ann Sayok, Ms. Pamela Chan, and Ms. Olivia Wong, uh, who serves as the voice of the private sector and also provides the technical assistance as well as ensuring the partnership with the private sector. So that is very critical. So this is a very recent initiative. And as I said, uh, can I have the next slide, please? So indeed, as presented by Dr. Brown, uh, there are several studies that show the vital role of women in advancing the seed system and attaining food security. So for instance, women show, can I have the next slide, please? Women show that uh, there's great resilience in responding to production constraints and meeting the day-to-day -day household demands. They are managers of specific domains, curators of community seed banks, caretakers of small livestock, and as handlers and processors of, of small grains. Um, selecting grain traits most suitable for food and selecting varieties of different micro niches are often skills best learned from women, since food handling and preparation tend to be the female domain in many of the areas of the semi-arid tropics. So at ICRISAT, for instance, we have several reports that reveal women are vital source of knowledge on seeds, However, their knowledge and access to new information are often marginalized by formal sector interventions and that they have to be integrated into the seed system to increase the uptake of seed technologies, particularly in improving food security. Knowingly or unknowingly, women are responsible for widening the genetic base by their innovative practice of cropping systems. They deliberately mix various kinds of land races with different quantitative, qual quantitative characters in a single field. I think um, this is very much shown in one of my research undertakings before on, uh, on sweet potato, where in the Cordillera, a lot of them would grow several uh, types of uh, sweet potato in a particular land, and they would know which one would do best. They would, they would know which one is good for their uh, swine production and they would know which one is good for fermenting uh, sweet potato, which they use for their uh, drinks. 
So, so here, in addition, such a practice allows introgression of genes into the crop, which may give rise to new various genotypes. The central role, role of women in agrobiodiversity management and the associated knowledge, particularly in seed selection, production, and seed exchange has been vital for resource enhancement. So here we can see that indeed, women are indispensable in ensuring food security. So that is in brief what we're doing here at the Department of Agriculture. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned earlier, interspersing some of my experiences in my research undertakings. Thank you and good day to all. Thank you very much, Dr. Mula, for your presentation and also for facilitating to connect with us with Secretary Dar. Uh, it was very interesting to know about the NSTP program, the National Seed Technology Park program. I think it's very important in the context of the subject we are discussing seed in Philippines. Thank you. With this, we move to our next speaker, Ms. Emilita M. Oro. Ms. Oro is the Acting Asia Regional Director and also the Country Director for Philippines at the International Institute of Rural Reconstruction, IIRR. Ms. Oro is a staunch advocate of rural development and is actively engaged in global networks such as Prolinova, promoting local innovation in ecologically oriented agriculture and NRM, and the scaling up of nutrition movement. I would request Ms. Oro to share with us her experience of community engagement and its role in the development of seed system. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, greetings to everyone. Uh, unfortunately, it, starts to it started to rain here, so hopefully you can hear me. But let me start by sharing a bit about uh, my organization, the International Institute of Rural Reconstruction, or IRRR. It's a research and development uh, NGO with its headquarters here in the Philippines, but currently operating in eight countries in Asia and in Africa. And uh, here in the Philippines, we focus our flagship program uh, on food and nutrition security and resilient livelihoods, ensuring that uh, we are addressing the needs of smallholder farmers, women, children, and youth. And uh, nowadays, uh, we're looking at food security and nutrition more holistically uh, within the perspective of food systems. Thus, uh, we further strengthen the sustainable food production efforts of IRRR. And I think it is here where the importance of seed conservation and propagation become very important via crop museum that IRRR uh, had conceptualized. Can I have the next slide, please? Next slide. So what is a crop um, museum? Um, here we really address the issue of access to uh, seeds as well as planting materials, which is usually the problem of our farmers and the sustainability of uh, food production or gardening. So the crop museum is actually a decentralized facility which uh, where we conserve uh, genetic resources, uh, whether it's native or modern uh, variety that are locally adapted to a particular area. And they are special, one, because they are part of our uh, food culture. We have been uh, eating them, but some of them have been lost or started to get lost. So we want to conserve them. Second is they are special because of their nutritional relevance. So we need uh, these vegetables, these crops, because they provide vitamins and minerals. And third, they are climate hardy. I mean, nowadays, because of climate change for extreme weather events, we really need to have this climate hardy varieties of uh, crops, vegetables, or uh, other crops. So climate uh, Crop Museum intends to achieve uh, agrobiodiversity, which will in turn provide us diversified healthy diet. Uh, next slide. Yeah, next slide, please. 
So the crop museum uh, is not just a conservation, but also a propagation uh, center. And in here, uh, we are trying to make sure, um, can you go to the other slide? Here, we would want to ensure that we have uh, a lot of variety uh, producing interspecies as well as intraspecies variety. Can you get back to the next slide? So um, here you can see there are a lot of uh, either leafy vegetables, legumes, or root crops. For example, at the center you have there the red amaranth. Uh, there are a lot of um, a variety of amaranths. Um, root crops like, for example, uh, sweet potato in the IRRR Crop Museum, we have 17 uh, uh, variety of uh, sweet potato uh, thanks to the Philippine root crops who have uh, worked with IRRR. And another feature of the Crop Museum is uh, it being a learning site. See, this is a living museum where you really see the crops, uh, look at it, learn about it. And as you can see, women are very much interested in this diverse genetic resources. Next slide. So if, uh, yeah, uh, definitely seed saving uh, practices is very important. So within the crop museum establishment, there are capacity building of those uh, managing uh, the crop museum. And there are also seed exchanges uh, between and among a crop museum. I think this is important as they exchange their innovative uh, practices for saving seeds. So this is uh, one good practice also. Can I have the next slide, please? Yeah, next slide. So the Crop Museum, uh, one of the mature uh, Crop Museum program that IRRR had uh, is in school. Uh, if you go to the next slide, you'll see the Crop Museum in school, uh, which is very important as here in the Philippines, there is a national program called Gulayan sa Paaralan or the school gardening program. But uh, mainly sustainability uh, is a problem because of the needs for seeds every now and then. And they have very limited budget to pay uh, for seeds uh, every time year in, year out. So the Crop Museum in school uh, provide planting materials to sustain the school gardens that are providing vegetables for the school feeding program of the malnourished children. So uh, we're also very happy that during this uh, pandemic, uh, COVID-19, we have seen the Crop Museum benefiting the families around them. Next slide. Uh, especially the families. As, as you know, nowadays, uh, a lot of families are in, on lockdown. So the crop museums had provided vegetables as well as planting materials. Next slide. That can be used uh, by the families either for food or for having their own uh, kitchen garden. Next slide. So um, here we see, of course, uh, can I have the next slide, please? Yeah. Next. Yeah, uh, next slide, you will see how um, Definitely, we would want the crop museums to be in the communities where they are needed most. And IRRR is working in one of the recognized climate smart villages uh, in the Philippines in Ginyangan, Quezon. And in here, uh, as you can see, the farmers has access uh, to it as a learning uh, laboratory wh where they learn about the different crops and also have access to both high value as well as uh, local varieties that they can use to diversify their farm. I think that is very important because it decreases the climate risk of our smallholder farmers. 
Next slide, please. So this one is from uh, the province of Cavite. I know there are people from Cavite watching right now in Maragondon and Bailen, where we are also working with small family farms. And in here, you can, as we have observed, the men usually works in the farm and in the crop museum. And you can see the women really uh, taking care of the management in terms of uh, seed saving. I think we are very good at that. And one is also promoting the uh, home gardens using the crops or the planting materials coming from the crop museum, as well as uh, trying to um, promote also or having facilitating the learning or teaching uh, within the crop museum. So those are the three key role of women that we have seen around uh, seed saving and seed conservation. Next slide. And I think it was also mentioned that one of the issues, of course, of women and children is uh, malnutrition. So uh, in the next slide, you can see that uh, we have also conceptualized crop museum within the context of the first 1,000 days. And I think this is very important because we really look at improving access of family members with increased nutrient requirement. These are the uh, pregnant women, lactating and young children, particularly those uh, two years old as well as up to the five years old. And we focus on crops that are rich in vitamins and minerals like amaranth, alubati, that they are rich in iron and calcium, root crops like sweet potato and arrow root that can be used for um, complementary feeding for baby six months. Um, and then beans as alternative source of protein. So the women here are, one of their role is really experimenting and innovating how to prepare this uh, vegetables coming from the seeds that are planted uh, from the crop museum. Uh, next slide. So, um, yeah. So one of our, we, we really would want um, our efforts to look at how the crop museum can um, produce more nutritional outcomes and also livelihood opportunities, uh, especially for women, because uh, here they can also sell seeds as well as vegetables coming from the community gardens or, or crop museum. So in the next uh, few years, IRRR would want uh, in partnership with our uh, local governments as well as the Department of Agriculture to have more crop museum. In fact, uh, very recently, uh, hopefully it will reach our regional offices. We have provided a diversity kit like this and then with seeds like uh, this paayap or uh, cowpea and tapilan or rice bean. These are really local to us. Some of them maybe we do not know. So we need to familiarize the, ourselves. And the idea is to have uh, crop museum centers in the regions. And in school, we already have one crop museum per school division, but we need to have more. So hopefully this will contribute to a better local seed system and local food systems uh, within the country. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Oro. Uh, you highlighted a few very important issues within the subject of uh, climate resilient seed system, which is about access to seed and planting materials, especially of climate hardy crops, and the importance of conservation and the role of women in this conservation of seeds and access to seeds. Thank you so much. With this, we move to our next speaker, Dr. Mary Ann P. Sayok. Dr. Sayok is the public affairs lead of East West Seed International. She has 20 years of professional experience in the seed industry. She was former general manager of East West Seed Philippines, a Dutch company engaged in research, development, production, and distribution of vegetable seeds. She is active in the local and international seed sector and currently is the president of the Philippine Seed Industry Association. 
I would now request Dr. Sayo to please present the perspective of private sector on the role of women in developing a climate smart seed system. Dr. Sayo, please. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sampriti. Um, good, good day, good evening, everyone, uh, depending on which part of the globe you are. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to talk in this seminar on a topic that I am passionate about. Uh, next slide, please. As we have uh, heard from our previous speakers, women play a key role in the production of food. According to the FAO, women produce over 50% of the world's food. Women comprise about 43% of the agricultural labor force. Now we all know that seed is the starting point of the food system. Women hold the potential of playing a crucial role in developing a climate smart seed system. Next slide, please. Let me tell you briefly about uh, East West Seed. East West Seed introduced market-oriented plant breeding in Southeast Asia. We are the market leader in tropical vegetable seeds. Our business model is centered on smallholder farmers. And we have consistently ranked number one in the Global Seed Index for vegetables. Our founder, Simon Groth, received the World Food Prize Laureate in 2019 in recognition for what he and the company have done in improving food and nutrition security and increasing the income of smallholder farmers. Next slide, please. At uh, Eastwood Seed, we recognize the important role of women and we support the sustainable development goal number five, which is achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. And uh, we, at East West Seed, one out of three employees is a woman. Next slide, please. A climate smart seed system starts with plant breeding. At East West Seed, we have Philippines. I mean, at East West Philippines, we have 12 plant breeders, 10 of whom are women. So that is a high percentage of 83%. Most key functions in the company are headed by a female manager, to mention research operations, genetic resource management, stock seed production and research, seed technology, quality assurance, plant pathology, communication and public affairs, and knowledge transfer. Our knowledge transfer team is composed of 18 staff, 17 of whom are women. There is only one man in the team. Next slide, please. Women farmers, in a way, are involved in participatory plant breeding. They participate in variety evaluation and selection, which is a step prior to commercial introduction. They perform on-farm trials and provide data on yield, disease resistance, fruit quality, and taste. They provide our plant breeders with unbiased feedback so they can make adjustments in their breeding program. Next slide, please. In hybrid seed production, yeah, yeah. In hybrid seed production, the quality of manual pollination is vital. This provides a good backdrop for the participation of women in commercial seed production. At East West Seed, we have a total of 580 hectares of seed production spread across nine production areas in Luzon and Mindanao. We have about 3,500 contract farmers producing seeds in an average of 6,000 square meters per contract family. Crops planted are bitter gourd, cucumber, lufa, tomato, hot and sweet pepper, watermelon, squash, musk melon, yard long bean, okra, 
upo or bottle gourd and eggplant. The number of pollinators per cropping season is 13,169 with a ratio of 70% female and 30% male. They render pollination work for an average of 47 days in one season. Our seed production team prefers to hire women pollinators as they have tender or delicate, delicate hands and are more patient and persevering in finding female flowers. Another reason is that they are more reliable in terms of work attendance, no hangover. Women farmers also do the harvesting, seed extraction, drying, and cleaning of seeds. Next slide, please. Knowledge transfer underpins a climate smart seed system. The participation of women farmers in knowledge transfer enables them to optimize the genetic potential of improved varieties. At East West Seed Knowledge Transfer Projects, female attendees in farmers' field schools average 75%. We are increasingly putting gender targets into specific projects, not just in participation, but also targeting women as key farmers and lead influencers. In a number of projects, we have women leaders who help organize farmers' classes. In one project, we help develop women roving agents who manage community-based agro shops. Next slide, please. To conclude, the role of women in developing a climate-smart seed system needs to be recognized. The role of women in agriculture is not merely complementary to that of men, but, or, is it, or it is a provision of support system. The work of women farmers is the same as their male counterparts. It is imperative to mainstream, mainstream gender perspectives in the design of climate smart seed system and in all agricultural programs and projects. Government should provide institutional support to women farmers in healthcare, credit, financial literacy, among others. And as uh, mentioned by Dr. Anna Mula, uh, I'm also uh, actively involved in the development of the National Seed Technology Park. And if you see the team, they are all women. So I think we will look at this project with a real gender lens. This photo says it all, the power and resilience of women. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Sayo, for helping us learn that in the Philippines, women play a significant role in the private sector as breeders, as women pollinators, and knowledge transfer experts. And I'm more than happy to know that we women are considered to be more reliable workforce in the private sector. That's, that's brilliant. Thank you. With that, I uh, request Dr. Mohanty to take over for the question and answer session, please. Uh, thank you, Samdhiti, and thank you all the panelists, and thank you, Dr. Dar, Dr. Dar, for popping in and taking some questions. So I have uh, I have only few selected, very few questions here. I we just don't have the time. Uh, so I'll 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 ask all the panelists, please get your video on, so mm. that I can ask mm. questions, direct my question to you. My first question to Dr. Dar. So Dr. Joe is going to present uh, answer it. What are the requirements or qualifications to be included in the registry system for basic sector in agriculture? Uh, either Dr. Mula or Dr. Joe can present it, uh, the reply this, answer it. Dr. Joe, are you there? I'm here. Yes. Can you so hear Dr. me? Yeah. Yes. So Did you hear my question? Is, yeah, it's okay. about registering with the RSBSA. Correct. Okay, yeah, it's, it's quite easy. Uh, you can download the form, or if you have no access to the form, what you can do is you can get in touch with, with your municipality, in your municipalities, so in your provincial uh, agricultural offices. You can, you, they can help you with the form. You can fill up the application and then 
it will uh, it will immediately be registered with the with the they will they will help you register in the um, online. Good. Uh, since Anna, you are here. There are a couple of questions directed to you. The first is: uh, Does Department of Agriculture have this advocacy on empowering farming community on seed saving? I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't get that, um, uh, Sam. Uh, does the Department of Agriculture have this advocacy on empowering farming communities on seed saving? I don't know, is your question for Emily? Oh, the Department of Agriculture? Um, yes. Can I see that question? Uh, have this advocacy on empowering farming communities on seed saving. On what was the last word? Seed saving. Seed saving. Seed saving. Seed saving. Yes. Uh, um, like community gene banks, you mean? Yes. Ah, uh, okay. It's like this. So, uh, what we're doing in the Department of Agriculture, okay? So, for instance, with our urban agriculture. We're not just putting up with hybrid seeds, but we also have what we call the open pollinated or the varieties. So we have we have what we call uh, community community um, uh, ag community gardens. We call it, or there are we maintain these community gardens. And one of the oldest community gardens actually was way back during the time of the secretary when he first became the secretary. So. This is located in Holy Spirit in Quezon City. So they still maintain uh, one of the reasons why we put up community uh, urban, agri urban gardens is because we would like them to sustain the production of planting materials. So the only way by which you can sustain, of course, is putting up with varieties. Although uh, uh, we also make use of hybrid varieties, I mean hybrid seeds. Uh, good. Uh, one one last question, Anna. This is on your National Seed Technology Park you presented. When do you expect the NTSB to be operational? Does... Uh, Go ahead. Okay. okay. So uh, there are several meetings going on. And uh, actually, as mentioned earlier, we, we just uh, rolled out the survey, the simple survey and information are coming out. So when we talk of seed system, it covers everything that has been you know, mentioned by the one who uh, made the query. And we're looking forward that initial activities will happen this year. Tama po ba, Ma'am Mary Ann? Okay, so we have a lot of, hopefully we're looking yes. at that. So we're looking at that and uh, all the nitty gritty. So we wanted to make sure that the planning part is, is very much in place. That's precisely, we are doing some survey, we are doing some site visit, so that more or less we can all sort of um, represent all the stakeholders in this um, project of the Department of Agriculture. But I know that there is like 200 million earmarked already for, for the uh, start of this uh, NSTP or the National Seed Technology Park, which is a big, which is just one of the components of the entire, of a big project. And this is going to be based at uh, Clark, Clark uh, Air Base, uh, at that Clark development area. Uh, thank you, thank you, Anna. The next question for Dr. Brown. This, the question is from an Indian participant. Uh, her question is, as you shared, women are comparatively empowered in Philippines than South Asia or Africa. Do you think that there can be some challenges that can be barriers to capitalize on their existing strengths? Uh, yeah, well, uh, thank you very much for the question. Yes, uh, while uh, relatively uh, women in the Philippines are more empowered than their counterparts in, say, South Asia or Africa, um, I believe there are still um, really a lot of uh, uh, works uh, to be done, especially 
in the area of uh, technologies because our innovation system before, I mean, our um, uh, um, the uh, technology system before in agriculture was didn't have that uh, much of the gender lens. And so a lot of technologies that we have um, uh, really um, uh, do not have um, that lens. And so uh, we're actually um, uh, crafting a uh, proposal on this, a project on this, which can be supported by PICARD. And this is to examine the uh, different, um, you know, the, the technology system uh, and identify uh, in what uh, areas um, uh, in um, agricultural production and even in the seed system, uh, will, uh, women need uh, some, you know, uh, technology interventions that can really help them. By the way, one findings of, uh, one of the findings of uh, the study which I presented before is that um, in the Philippines, there's still some problem with regards to drudgery, really, as, as far as women are concerned, um, especially because, um, um, especially in the area of uh, transplanting, for instance, uh, there are uh, still uh, a lot of um, uh, activities of women in the field um, where there is uh, really some drudgery. Uh, I think that was pointed out by the study which I, uh, I, I, I presented earlier. So uh, yes, uh, uh, while if you examine empowerment, uh, uh, women in the Philippines are relatively more empowered, but there are still areas that uh, really have to be addressed. Another thing is uh, on, um, on uh, agricultural businesses, uh, or uh, um, we also would like to examine agricultural business models uh, and see whether, uh, it, it, you know, um, the uh, system and the requirements for entering into uh, business mod businesses in agriculture are, Thank you. Um, also uh, you know uh, would also um, would be at least neutral as far as gender is concerned Thank you Dr. Brown the next question yeah. for Emily uh, there are many questions you can answer in the chat I'm just speak a couple of them in school gardens are they taught how to save and produce seeds from their harvest? Uh, yes, um, uh, definitely. I, I think uh, that is one of the things that we, one of the skills that we would want the students uh, to acquire. So, of course, you need to simplify things. So, they are hands-on training and the crop museum play a role in that uh, learning, as a learning laboratory. Okay. The do communities share seeds from crop museum in various locations? Yeah, um, I would say uh, we did a lot for schools, the, the seed exchange, uh, the crop museum uh, at the communities, we are starting uh, the initiative, there is still a lot of things to be done. But the idea is really to exchange uh, practices and innovative, uh, you know, uh, practices that they have. Yeah. Uh, can we avail a diversity kit or seed kits? Yes, actually, um, the reason why we establish Crop Museum now all over the Philippines in schools, uh, we have around 300 uh, Crop Museums in schools, but we need to have a lot for the community based so that uh, we can tap them. So if you are interested, uh, we can um, link you to the nearest craft museum that you have, and you can also uh, email us at IRRR. Uh, thank you, Emily. The next one for uh, Dr. Mary. Uh, your question is, in some parts of the Philippines, the indigenous people assign women as seed keepers. Mm -hmm. What are the initiative of DA, IIRR, East West Seed to ensure this cultural tradition will be preserved? Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, um, we have no specific pro programs for these uh, indigenous communities or uh, seed saving, but uh, we do encourage them to do it because um, <clears throat> for our genetic resource management, I think it is also very important. 
to 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 uh, to be able to maintain and conserve these uh, 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 seed species you know, of uh, of uh, good diversity. Uh, the next question is specifically on your company, not related to yeah. seed. Is uh, what benefits you provide to women working for the company, your company? You can, uh, I know. Yeah. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, in East West, we really don't have the uh, great. Good. So this is okay. I, between male and female. So we, we practically give benefits both to women and men. So that includes all the government mandated, uh, you know, like the maternity leave and also medical insurance. And in some of our uh, offices uh, in other countries, they also provide uh, even uh, facilities for childcare and breastfeeding. So uh, that, that's the specifically for women what we provide. So my last question, because of time constraint, I'll ask to open it for all panelists. You can answer very briefly. The question is very general. It, it seems that women have so many roles in the seed value chain. However, aren't they being bored as when they go home, they still do the house chores. So anybody can pitch in. How can women do everything? That's the bottom line is that we do yeah. in the same value chain in agriculture, then you go home, take care of the family. Uh, Sam, uh, I, I think for me, uh, we should not also stereotype households to women. I mean, household chores is, has to be shared also with the whole family, with the husband, so that women can also do productive roles. Thank you. And there are many, many, many questions there. Please go through it and answer to the whole panelist, uh, uh, to the entire yeah. audience there. So because of the, in keeping the time in mind, I'll just hand over to Sampriti for introducing our uh, uh, Dr. Agnes Lola for synthesizing it. Go ahead, Sampriti. We can stay on video, it's okay. Yeah, so I would also request uh, the panelists to look at the chat box uh, once again while the rest of the webinar goes on. And as we are heading towards the end of this webinar, finally, I would request Dr. Agnes C. Rola to synthesize the important points raised by our speakers today and also to present her own point of view from her 35 years of experience in the field of agriculture in mainstreaming the role of women for a climate resilient seed system in the Philippines. Dr. Rola is Professor <coughs> Emeritus at the University of Philippines, Los Banos. She, speci she specializes in natural resource economics, policy, social science research. She has, more, as I mentioned, five years of experience in the field of sustainable agriculture, natural resource management and development. She has authored more than 130 scientific publications. Thus, Dr. Ola, I would request you to share your valuable insights and, some light, and to throw some light on the path ahead for us on this subject. Thank you very much, Dr. Sampriti. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes Dr. Ola, you. you're very audible, all okay. clear. Yeah. Thank you. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for this kind invitation. And I would like to congratulate the panelists for a very productive discussion. As usual, I have learned a lot. So my role now is to synthesize the discussions by way of teasing out the role of women in the seed system in particular and providing suggestions on how to move forward. But before that, let me also explain the context as was also challenged by Dr. Sampriti. So there is no agriculture to speak of if there is two seeds. However, seeds are always underrated. The history will bear this out that the lack of seeds and planting materials for agricultural activities led to the collapse of civilizations. Globally, the CDIR centers where SIPs are part of place much pride in their gene banks, their crowning glory. Nationally, here in the Philippines, we need to protect the varieties that are endemic in the country. And I was very pleased to learn about the crop museum that the 11RR IRRR is promoting. It is also refreshing to note that the DA under Secretary Dar 
is pursuing the establishment of a national seed technology uh, park, the efforts of which is to bring all the key players in the seed industry to ensure that good quality and certified seeds are available to farmers in a timely fashion and at affordable price. So this is a very important project. This webinar is important because it highlighted the role of women in the development of a climate smart seed system by way of understanding the use of gender lens on farmer access to and control of seed, the participation of women in commercial seed production and the rich benefits and empowerment of women farmers towards climate smart seed system development. What have we learned so far? And I have a time constraint, so I would just like to look at uh, about three uh, items in my list. First, women in Southeast Asia, and particularly in the Philippines, are already empowered in its role in agricultural activities, especially in the seed value chain. Uh, the, so the issue for Southeast Asia, as was mentioned, should not really be about empowerment, but about how to capitalize the strengths that they have. Second, the role of women is vital in agrobiodiversity management. So it was also mentioned that women are curators of community seed banks, handlers and processors, sources of indigenous knowledge for that matter. So it's very good to really recognize these particular roles. The Crop Museum is one way to conserve our agrobiodiversity. It's also one way to have community access to seeds and ultimately to have to provide for healthy diets. So it's very important hopefully that the uh, crop museum should be um, recognized as um, or scaled up or uh, replicated in other areas, so to speak, and not just in schools, but particularly in communities. And thirdly, um, I really like the presentation of Mom Sayo about the role of women in commercial production, commercial seed production. This is the first time, I'm sure, um, I hope there's going to be more data, scientific data to prove that women pollinators indeed have more tender hands, <laughs> are patient <laughs> and are persevering. So these are very difficult things to measure, but it's nice to, to see them. And I think as a woman, I would also agree with you. So what are some of the recommendations? Um, again, uh, three, top my list, number one, uh, it's about policy. Policy is very important. And so there was a mention about the amendment of the Seed Industry Development Act uh, by Dr. Ernie. And I hope that we can more or less investigate the contents of that act and how to really emphasize or put in the gender a lens um, as we finalize the act. Second, again, Crop Museum. I love Crop Museum, Emmy. So I wish that there's going to be, it's not going to be uh, very um, expensive, right? It's participatory, it's inclusive, it's community-based. It's very, very ideal for, especially for our endemic varieties. So I hope government would have some funds maybe to uh, put into my friend Emily's project <laughs> in order for more replicates for this one. And thirdly, very importantly, is to continue to provide institutional support for women as they participate in the seed system and the climate smart seed system. Um, earlier, there was mention by ATI, uh, by Mam Anna, on the inclusion of women in the formal credit system. This is not very um, uh, what normal or regular in the Philippines. So. Uh, that particular uh, ACPC uh, program, I think, is a good uh, vehicle for women to be involved in formal credit system and hopefully to recognize as well the roles of women in the seed value chain and thus uh, financing those roles of women in the seed value chain through that ACPC allowed. So I think that's all. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rola, very much for 
you know, in encapsulating everything so clearly uh, for all of us, everything that we heard today. Uh, I hand over to Dr. Mohanti because we are already running short of time. People want to leave, it seems, for the for the conclusion. Uh, thank you, Sampriti. And uh, let me thank, first of all, Dr. Dar. You know, I know he's really busy and he's running around everywhere and coming in and taking some question with us. Very, very nice of him. As usual, he's a, he's a, he's a great scientist, great administrator. So, so Anna, please uh, convey my regards to Dr. Dahl for, for popping in and taking the questions. And I would like to also thank all the panelists. I think excellent presentation by all of you. Please go to the chat box and answer some of the questions because we hardly picked up 5% of the questions. There are 90% of the questions still left there. So I would like to thank all the panelists for the excellent presentations and, uh, and uh, all, the, all the information they provided to the participant. Also, my sincere thanks to our partner, PCAR, DOST PCAR, and Dr. Ebora, who was supposed to join, but he had also some emergency meeting he could not join. But Dr. Brown did as good job, you know, much better job than anybody else. So thank you, Dr. Brown, for, for filling in and giving the excellent presentation there. And my, my special thanks to Agnes. As usual, she is very clear. She is very focused. And she gave an give a, give a, uh, uh, excellent uh, synthesis of what has been discussed uh, during, the, during this webinar here. It's very useful information there. Uh, uh, then finally, let me thank the, uh, the participants, audience, for their active participations and the, all the comments I wish we could uh, we could uh, directly ask they can directly ask questions to the panelists, but looking at the size of the audience, it's just not possible to have the direct interaction between the participants and the panelists there. So this is the first of our webinar. We plan to do another one in the next few weeks. Please tune in for the announcement for our next webinar. It will be also done in partnership with PCAR and uh, other organizations there. Uh, so it's, I know it's already late. Uh, so thank you again, everybody for participating and uh, contributing to this webinar. I hope, the, I hope we provided some useful information in terms of the role of women uh, in, in developing this. Yes, and uh, uh, so next, I think, let me, uh, let me pop, show the screen for the evaluation one. Can we pop in the, can we show the screen? Here it is. Here it is. So if you, you can, if you, if, you, if you want to evaluate, you should evaluate so that we can get some feedback. Also, if you evaluate it, we'll also, if you request for a e-certificate or certificate, we'll be sending you the certificate of participation from our side. So please do the evaluations and click on the link you see on your screen there. Uh, you can you can complete the evaluation and request for the certificate there and also thank you again everybody for, for your active participations stay safe stay healthy ciao bye bye thank you bye, -bye. thank you again thank you bye. everybody thank you thank you everyone